you can download the background automatically and connect to it. You don't have to do any cooperation. Right now, you still have to start it by yourself and look at it manually. But in the, in the end, we expect that all the ID will just use this in the background for you when you don't have to do any setup. Well, and uh, that's really also for future usage because uh, a lot of things we want to do in the future is to provide like tools for ideas for refactoring, for uh, being able to like, go to target declaration and all these things. All these stuff are ideas of those uh, that we can implement in the compiler and thanks to compiler cache we can go very fast results, almost immediate and really precise results uh, to help ideas to really improve the workflow before any apps uh, development. Okay, that's not all. <laughs> we still have a lot of slides to go. So, uh, one of the things we had in 2.09 was well, is the optional structure files. So basically, when you declare a uh, structure uh, such as uh, this one uh, with two fields, you can have optional fields. Uh, you just add a question mark in front of the name of the field. And what it does is that uh, when you specify a function that takes a field, uh, you can omit uh, the optional fields. And we just, just like compile well. Okay. So, I mean, that's quite neat because a lot of front uh, uh, libraries, they have all these kind of different parameters you want to pass, but you don't need to pass all of them. They are like a kind of really optional thing. But you still want to pass them as a structure because you have a lot of them, so you need to name them. So this way you can actually like specify what are the really mandatory parameters and what are the optional ones. The only small thing that it only works when you pass a constant structure. If you pass something, a variable that is typed as Field, it will not uh, well, it, it will not work. It's just viable, which you just contain it because there is kind of uh, issue with it. But so if you work, if you pass a constant structure, it will work. Just that way. But that's most of the case anyway. In the, in the Another thing we have is like JSON just, just initialization. Uh, so you can write this now in 2.09. So it's enable you to copy paste JSON directly in Axe and just combine. And you can use also like like uh, like. Uh, 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 Fields in OTPR that were not uh, already like possible before. Um, well, just looking. Um, sorry. Yeah, and uh, well, well, you can access after you type that. You can access the little field with that dot syntax, but you cannot access the dollar command field with dot syntax because it's not allowed by the language. But you can still access it to reflect the field or like refection. So that's something to remember. But uh, with this kind of thing, you can, for example, when you are doing like some database things, so you have a ready source code and that, you know, both, like send requests which require dollars. Kind of so that's something nice. Uh, we have a new dead code uh, elimination. We really need to make these parameters look like shorter for the <laughs> next major release. <laughs> dead code elimination is quite long. Right. If you have an idea, just send it to me. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so what it does is just uh, dead code deviation. It was present before uh, with the rewrites, which is really uh, a bit better, uh, and uh, kind of treat some corner case that we haven't handled before. Uh, dead code deviation, what it does, it just it will just make uh, compile your program and only uh, compile the parts that are really used. So not only the classes that are used, but actually the actual methods that are used. So if there is a method you are not using in your uh, in your program. Uh, it will just remove it from the compilation, so it will really reduce the output of the code size. And be really useful for JavaScript or some type of Flash. Especially if you are using big libraries with a lot of uh, like methods and a lot of classes, and you are only using, using a very really small part of it. With the code compilation, you only get uh, to compile the parts that you really need. So that's really something yeah, useful. Um, it reduces a lot of code size. Uh, but because, of course, we need to kind of uh, figure out only the things that are already compiled, uh, it means that there is no compiler cache for the code compilation, the code compilation. That's the drawback. Okay? So you, if you want to use a, a get compiler cache, you, you have to when you use the code, code, code elimination, it is able to compile that cache. Because it will cast kind of to recompile everything to make sure you are actually using it or not. Okay? That's a, something we need. We could work uh, on this later. Yeah, okay. also some smart array inference. You have an array of that class and two like instance of these uh, subclasses uh, before it was not combining this kind of thing because it was saying, I think. But no, it's, it works perfectly. So. 
Uh, more time now, libraries. So we have Excel PDF files, which is kind of an API for manipulating string as you develop. Because as you know, uh, depending on the platform, string is different. Uh, if it's uh, uh, in JavaScript, it depends on your page encoding. If it's usually you take a uh, say it's PDF file, but you can also have your page encoding ISO, to be ISO. Uh, in Flash, it's PDF every, every time. Uh, or Nico or, or by uh, C++, it's an array of bytes, so it doesn't specify any encoding on the strings. So with this API, you have an API to work with future API, APIs, not the length, not in bytes, but in characters, uh, you know, be able to like, get some strings or a string, whatever the platform. So that's something that's also important. Um, we have XJSON also uh, in 2.09. Uh, it uses like a, a very like pure axe implementation. So we have first work, 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 work uh, a pure axe implementation. This way you can work exactly the same, whatever the platform. And then we have, of course, uh, we are using native uh, implementation when available. In JavaScript, we do auto detection. If it's available in the browser, we use the native implementation, which is, of course, a lot faster. And in Flash 11 Plus, uh, we use the native implementation for uh, things. So depending on the, plat on the platform, maybe for C++, we will have at some point uh, native implementation as well. Well, if it's ma if it uh, makes a difference, I'm not sure. So, so this kind of thing, we have one single API, uh, one single way of doing works on all the platforms, and use a native implementation when available. So that's something so nice. Uh, yeah, and you can force if you want to use uh, exactly the X implementation. You can force it with a design. Uh, Reflect get properties and property. Uh, as you know. When you create a property, uh, such as this one, uh, we get a uh, uh, you will, uh When you do uh, use the reflect of get field, uh, it will always return you the field value, not, it will not call the getter. That was the behavior before. Actually, it was just a bit wrong on C++, but it was fixed in 2.09. So now, if you want to access uh, a field or key, which might be a property, then you use reflect of get property. And this way, it will call the getter if there is one. And if there is no getter, it will just give you the field, like the same aggregate of field. So for a lot of liberal libraries that do, for example, twins and all, all these kind of things, uh, you can use reflect to get get property instead of get reflect to get field. And they are sure that if, even if the class declares uh, a property, uh, they can uh, access it. So it's also useful. Uh, we have new sysio and sys.net package. Because before we had um, uh, like one package for all the system PI, we had, we had neko.io, neko.io, we had c++.io, c++.net, and php.io, php.net. And there are actually more system language coming on, uh, platform support. So, well, we want to clear that. So we have one, one single sysio and sys package that contains everything for file access, process only, host, sockets, everything. Uh, then we can replace the whole package. Uh, we have a new sys top level class and sys of five system class that also does a lot of provide a lot of things such as printing, access to the command line of the argument, environment, uh, current working directories, calling commands, uh, getting the standard output, uh, input and error. So yeah, all of these are kind of system APIs. Uh, if you are working in the C++, PHP or Neko, uh, and in Java C sharp, you will be able to get uh, access to all of these with the same API. Uh, so, and also it's ready for X recognition because we have kept the old API, which is the neco.io uh, and neco.sys and all the php.io files. It's still available in X 2.09, but it's planned for removal in X.3 into X 3.0 because we want to have one single package, you know, like one package platform. So, what we exactly what we do is that you can compile the code using 2.09, you can compile your code with dash X3. And it will disable all these kind of temporary references from the old package to the new ones. And actually, you can kind of, with 2.09, you can uh, actually compile your code as it will compile in X3. And you can the package for, for this particular uh, package. So this way, you can actually trans like, do a transition, uh, prepare for transition. Uh, uh, a lot of improvement for JavaScript thanks to Bruno Garcia, which is uh, working on the web, doing a lot of work on JavaScript backend. We have a source mapping with Deepen. So, everybody knows about source mapping. Source mapping was that before when you are compiling JavaScript in development, 
it was uh, outputting a lot of additional information JavaScript, which are slowly, which were slowly done. Uh, the goal was to be able to kind of get exceptions and trace uh, inside the hashx files and not inside the JavaScript. But with uh, no, with source mapping, with uh, you compa when you compare JavaScript with debug, it will output an additional dot map file. And when you uh, use it, uh, when you debug on Chrome, right now it's only supporting Chrome, but it will be soon in Firefox. You will be able to debug directly your Xcode. Okay. So instead of instead of debugging the JavaScript code, source code that acts in better outputs, you directly debug have all your X classes, and you can step into and put the breakpoints and do all the debugging in directly inside your Xcode. Thanks to source mapping. What source mapping does is just say, okay. This line of JavaScript corresponds to this line in the and this file in the X source. So line mapping between the two uh, platforms. And it, uh, it's perfectly integrated in Chrome right now, soon Firefox. So if you, are, you are really able to get really uh, nice uh, for stack trace or for exception stack trace. You get all the information in your hash files. So that's really something which is uh, really great for building JavaScript. I see it for that. Uh, we have model mode with GS Modern. It's also like we are thinking about making that default for X3.0. So what GS Modern does is use uh, has use strict, which kind of guarantee that is no like uh, stretching going on. It has a really strict mode for JavaScript. It wraps all the like JavaScript code into a function wrapper that guarantees there is no blue bars that are you know, defined. Uh, and you can still expose your class to the uh, global context with arrow bars. Uh, exposed. So this is like a really modern way of doing JavaScript. Uh, we were asked about that this. So it's not available with uh, GS model and it will be uh, much more uh, uh, maybe later it could be important to point for not only side. Uh, we have on the Flash side we have new APIs for Flash uh, for the new national reference support. We have support for binary file this way, so you can just say my file from battery and introduce the flat data. And the same for songs. Uh, we support boy wave and uh, and this will sound uh, directly this way for people that want to uh, use flash projects. And uh, ah, yeah, the flash line directory is flash, and the flash, the whole flash directory will contain the flash 8 API. I love flash 8, so it makes much more sense this way. That's what they wanted to fix. Uh, there's much more, of course. Uh, fix, uh, I really don't need to go to all this. Well, there is a lot of things you can see in the release. Uh, well, you will see. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, fine, fine. Uh, so, um, plan from battle. So now we are, we, we are the presence. We are there. Okay. 2.09 2 is out. Uh, where do we go from there? Uh, so, of course, the next step is 3.0. So, <laughs> that's something we wanted to, to do, like, uh, of course, a few. I think we already talked about 3.0 at the last meeting. Uh, it was still a bit in the early stage. Now we are already getting like ready to start working on it. So now that 2.09 is out, we start working on 3.0, and it should be available when well, it's ready, of course. <laughs> uh, but well, I just, we, once we know what we want to put in, I guess that's uh, much more easy. We can go quite quickly and do that. Um, so this is major release. Uh, the thing that the major release we allow kind of breaks, breaking stuff. Of course, we uh, try to avoid it if it's, uh, if it's smart to do that. Uh, but we still kind of put in the mind that uh, we are allowed to break things, uh, to make the code that doesn't compile anymore, and you need to fix some points of your code. Mm -hmm. uh, but we don't do this for the fun. We do it to really get things better. So uh, the guidelines to uh, we are not follow that to to simplify the language. For example, there is a lot of people uh, we saw in the Google groups uh, that say, okay, this one is, uh, this particular feature is hard to use or I don't understand it correctly. And you have a lot of people, first timers, that uh, start using that and say, okay, this feature I don't understand or well, what doesn't what does it work this way? Uh, so we, we listen to that. So we want to really simplify things. Uh, and other things, uh, of course, we want to also avoid like feature bloating, like getting too much things into the language that is just become like impossible to learn, impossible to, uh, to fix everything. So uh, we want it also to make it easier for cross-platform development because that's something X is really shining at this at this point, uh, both for end users. So when you are a user and you want to adjust 
uh, well, when you want to code for cross platform, it has to be easier. And for it has also to be easier to add new platform to us. So we also have to think about this carefully. Uh, the thing we consider when we, when, we, uh, when we want to add a new feature to Axe is uh, uh, first have to have a well-defined behavior. So we have, we have to be sure that what, we, what kind of feature we want to make all if we work exactly in the details in the very small details. Uh, we have to be specified uh, Two reasons for that. First, because of <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of design of Axe. It's, like, it's nice because it's really tight. Like, if you like dynamic type in programming language, like code is something else. I'm thinking of you there. But anyway, uh, and, he, and the second point is that uh, as soon as it's pretty type in, it can be very well optimized on all the platforms. Uh, and it can, we, we can get a lot of uh, nice features. When it's not pretty type in, it's just harder to get it right on all the platforms. So, uh, yeah. Another thing that you want to have when you consider a new feature is how to be efficiently uh, available to be implemented on all the platforms. So, because some of the platforms, of course, this already supports this particular feature, so it's easy. On some of the platforms, you have like kind of uh, it's easy to add it. And if you have a feature, for instance, that on some platforms, for example, on, on JavaScript, maybe it will be a bit slower. But as long as it doesn't impact the world application speed, I mean, as, a, as long as it doesn't uh, prevent uh, to get good speed for all the other things you're using, then it's fine. But if it's as a feature, for instance, uh, some people uh, ask about uh, what about this particular feature, for example, like operator overloading and things like that. But if you have to do like a check when doing dynamics, say stuff, uh, for every time you want to add two strings, two things together, then it slows down the whole uh, process. So we want to make sure that a new feature doesn't uh, kind of cripple the other like things you are using. So that's something we also want to be sure. Uh, and you have to have good useful and complexity ratio. So we don't want to put something which are not so much useful but really complex to add uh, for the platforms because we know that Axe will have have a whole lot of platforms and we have much more in the future. So we don't want at some point to be the states that having a new platform is just impossible because there's all these things to do and it's so much complexer. It doesn't work. So keep it simple, keep it easy, and uh, at the same time uh, get maximum power uh, for the end user uh, with this feature set. Well. Uh, so let's go on with the thing we are planning for 3.0. Uh, one of the things is string and interpolation. So Basically, you will be able to do this thing. Uh, so that's a way with a dollar $p is a way to reference the uh, p variable, uh, local variable. And you could also like add expressions between a curly brace uh, this way. So this just create a string. Uh, and if we just call the methods and add them together and return the string. So that's something. Uh, you can already do that with sd.format in 2.09. So if you do any of format of this string, it will return the user like uh, uh, the, like formatted string. Uh, but uh, it will pass it and do everything and report you the results in case if there is no p value. Uh, so, but uh, now we we want to make it default for all strings to to work with this. So all strings will we be able to directly write this. Uh, the reason is that right now when you want to do something such as like uh, kind of writing a lot of uh, thing. You start writing your text, and you say, oh, I need to, to write to add a variable. So you have a choice either to uh, do a plus, close your string, do a plus, and then open the string again. So that's something that, like a bit hard to write. Or you can do SD format, but then you have to come back to the beginning of your line at the format, and then come back to the end of the string and continue writing. So we want to make it default to make sure that it's, it's, it's kind of uh, compilation time things. So it's, uh, uh, simplify properties. So yeah, we are get a lot of discussion in the middle of uh, the middle of about properties or make them right. So uh, here's a proposal for this. Uh, basically, uh, we want to first there is no really no really no really need to uh, be able to specify your getter name uh, because getter name itself is not very valuable information. Everybody should have his own like standard for that. I think it's not good. So we kind of say 
uh, standardize the name. So you will just say uh, property has a getter. So you say yes, has a setter. Let's it says set. So you don't you no longer specify the name of the getter. You just say get and set. And then when you are going to add the getter, uh, you use get prop and set prop. Uh, using an underscore is a way to uh, to nicely separate between. Uh, it is clearly a getter. You replace the underscore to separate between the two. Uh, and actually, it's also for, for coming from Flash. When you write uh, in Flash, data, it's like function get space is the name of the property. So you just replace a, a space with an underscore, and that's it. <laughs> that's pretty much the same. So this is the kind of things we. So it, it's also a really, really simplified reflection because we know that the getter, if it exists, is always get underscore the property name. So we can really uh, check for if there is a property with this name. It's pretty. Uh, and uh, yeah, to also to simplify things, as soon as you declare that, if you declare nothing else, it will automatically create for you uh, uh, the get prop and set prop uh, function. You don't have any more anymore to uh, like kind of write them yourself with uh, nothing. You just do nothing. If you just want to, you just write this and it will generate for this. So that's something also we want to kind of make it easy for properties to, uh, to work. And of course, it doesn't create all the like hidden properties if it's a getter default, which means it's only a little learning variable or something. But, you know. uh, we want to uh, add in import improvements. So this is a very really classic one. Uh, maybe we should have this for a long time already. But anyway, <laughs> it will come. <laughs> Wait a little more. And so, well, it was not there before because we are worried about uh, kind of Bloating the uh, kind of top level uh, namespace. But you could import, import everything now, and uh, you could also import statics. Uh, when you do, uh, I want to import all the statics of my jQuery class as globals. So this way you will be able to have uh, globals in your class. For example, let's say that gs.jQuery have a, a g, uh, j constructor that is uh, actually. Uh, a way to say return new jQuery or the parameter. This way, as soon as you import GS or jQuery, that star, you will be able to say G of my request dot, and you have a jQuery. So that's really simplify things uh, uh, to uh, really be able to kind of build libraries that gives you top level uh, variables uh, for your program. So that's something important. So for instance, you can import a very specific uh, function. So if you import x dot on the price, you will get the top level tracks. That, well, I mean, you already have that. <laughs> but that's a way to show you how it will work. Uh, right now, if you have a top level tracks, it will be the same as if you write x import x dot top level tracks. Okay? That's a way to add new, like, top level methods, whatever you want. Uh, we also want to uh, have a lot of requests for kind of Able to, a lot of people, they have all the like, libraries and they have to write all these imports for every file they, every file they, they create. So what we will do is we will allow default imports.hx, uh, which is a, a file that is it's per project. So in your project, if you have this file, it means that it will contain all the imports and the using declaration that you, you put inside there. They will be automatically imported in all your files in your project. So this way you write it once, all the import, default import there in this file, and automatically it's available on your file. That's something that so that really helps to uh, like, you know, scale when you have a lot of libraries and you want to use. And uh, actually libraries will be able to use also, because for instance, let's say the enemy, will be able to define the enemy import of Ashix, which contains all the default imports when you are using enemy. And as soon as, as, soon as you include uh, the enemy library, you will be able to use uh, in all your files, all the imports that are already done for you. So it's a way to really like kind of you just do it. Uh, you just use enemy and you can access to all the enemy like values directly without having to import everything. So that's something you want to really uh, kind of get quickly to 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 the point when you actually write code and less setup. Maybe the library does a setup for you and then you're done. You just have to write. Code. Using we also invite import or something so on, to want to do. Uh, we are planning also a replacement for callback. How many people know about callback and are using it? Uh, quite a lot, okay. Because some people are like a callback. 
you did the computation somewhere? <laughs> so I have, I have that a lot. So well, we want to actually replace it to make it much, much more understandable. Uh, so right now, when you create a callback, you will see that this okay. On click is a like a field or something, a callback function, and there is a callback a click element e. Or e is a variable that you capture. It's like uh, the element on which which is clicked. And uh, so this kind of thing you write. And uh, we want to transform it to this. Uh, basically, as soon as you use an underscore uh, into, uh, into a local, uh, uh, into a function call, it will say return the function that all the underscores are, re are kind of, uh, re replaced by temporary variable. So it, it will be the same as callback uh, this way. And then it's just more natural to write. Uh, it doesn't, it's also play well with completion because before you will have to kind of uh, do write callback and then you function and your arguments in a separate list. So this way you get completion when you open the like parenthesis, you can kind of see what arguments are required. And you just replace the arguments that you want to apply later with underscores. And this will create a function that contains the arguments that will be applied later. So. Yeah, and can also be you can also reverse, for instance, which can also, you cannot do with callback. When you call back, you will just apply the first two or three arguments and uh, keep with the remaining ones. With a new uh, way of writing, you will be able to say, I want to this one, I want to take as a parameter on my function. So on click, we pass this parameter, and this one is fixed already. So it's so simple. More switch. Uh, so we want to add a quad so we can check this thing. So I want to switch on something. Uh, in case a x, so this is a switch on a new, and if x is more than zero, then we go into this case. But if it's not, we go on to the next one. Then we can switch on case minus one. If it's minus one, then we go on this case. If not, we go to the next one, and so on. I know maybe sometimes some more complex things that like vc and all false is a bit complex structure, then we go in this case. And in case it's not none of this, then uh, we get default. And here, as some, something, something we want to make it optional, of course, is to be able to catch the value that was switched. Uh, because sometimes you have to move it into a temporary variable. So this way you get, you get the default value, which was uh, the return result of getting new value. So something like that. Well, small, small improvements uh, for switching. So, that's some part of the thing we want to make for two people. And uh, yeah, and uh, but not all. We want to really move forward. Uh, so we want to have new targets. I think you should come to Corey. I, I think you will come anyway to Corey talk tomorrow. Uh, but uh, new targets we are planning for X, uh, C sharp and Java. Uh, more libraries, more tools. Uh, we have NPG uh, added plugin. People are working on that. Uh, we have NME tools at three and plus. Uh, new well, and a new, a new lot of tools that are necessary for improving ads. And uh, yeah, contribute. That's important. That's a key word there. Uh, it's not something that uh, everybody can really help with that. It's not something that uh, uh, a few people are already contributing. I mean, more and more every day. And uh, I think it's nice to have as many people contributing to the uh, to the code system to create really a lot of uh, tools that all the developers might need. If you have a need, uh, then maybe most probably other people have. And uh, since most of the things are open source, and uh, if you just write a small thing for yourself and you put it online, you get other people like helping you to get it better. And actually, you will get kind of uh, a nice way to improve your like workflow. So something nice. Uh, yeah, we want also like. <laughs> 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 we have to make a big replace on the on the week, I guess. <laughs> so that's what we went for. Uh, I think it will come this year. So it's basically uh, before we are on summer, after summer. What after? <laughs> 
Yeah, you have to have no, you can't look at the wall. And <laughs> you have to get really long term domination because uh, you, don't, uh, you don't have a lot of weapons right now. So you, can't, you have still a small army. So. Well. Uh, so in the title, I call it X4. Uh, but yeah, when I'm thinking about it, I, I'm not, I don't know exactly what will X4 will be. I don't know what it will be, and I don't know what it will, it will contain. So instead of calling it X4, which is a bit like too much maybe uh, uh, like, uh, long term, we call it X, I call it X next. What's next we have after treatment or what? What do we go? So <coughs> do we exactly? The question I was asking myself is: Do we exactly need more features? I mean, after some time, you you start adding a lot of things in language. And uh, you say, okay, this is nice, but I mean, for example, it's a lot of really corner case, and uh, not so many people really, really need it. And most of the people starting with Axe have no need, definitely no need for it, or very hard to understand what it works. So, well, with time, I guess that the more, most of the most, uh, most of the time we uh, in Axe we spend in new targets, more libraries, and be less a bit language change. So, for treatment, we want to have something which is very clean, very nice, uh, well, well optimized, and uh, uh, we want to kind of clean the small like things that we feel not right. But in the end, it's not about changing walls, a lot, doing a lot of language change, or adding a lot of features every, every new release. So, I was thinking we need, we need to think about uh, X globally, not about only the compiler and the language, but also about what is X. What, what, what there is more than technology itself. So, let's think about what is long-term vision of us. What, what we even uh, uh, this year I actually got uh, approached by many companies, uh, and they came to me and say, "Okay, Ax is very cool. I want to use it, or we are really using it." Uh, and uh, what is, what is your long-term vision of Ax? Of what do you want to do with that? Uh, do you want to at some point to sell it, or to sell services, or? To kind of, you know, have a free edition and a paying edition or something. So people, they, they don't know. So they want to, they want to understand what, 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 uh, what we want to do with that. Not exactly I, but we as a like as a community, uh, people working on the compiler on the different targets and stuff like that. So we said kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of we come up with a like vision of what is the long term investment of us, what what we are doing in the in the long term. So of course. Uh, we want to keep one single programming language, I guess. We don't have, <laughs> we, are, we are coming for a world with a lot of different programming languages and want to have one single one. Uh, we want, of course, it to be all mainstream platforms. And I say mainstream because mainstream evolving. Uh, things are moving fast and faster and faster. So we want to keep on the mainstream. Every time the, like, uh, the, the really uh, things that people need, it, we need to have it in Axe. So right now we have maybe all the major, like, JavaScript, like, uh, uh, web platforms and a lot of people are using JavaScript, so we are. It's, it's very nice to be able to have a nice JavaScript support. So and the more and more, if, if in the, I don't know if in three years, that's, there is another thing that's uh, like uh, I something that kind of <laughs> come up with a new like platform. We need to support it also if it becomes mainstream. So well, that's all. We want to do that for this. We want to have all major ideas, all major tool sets, of course, so to make sure that people are. Uh, are really can get started with that easily without having to kind of change the more workflow. We have a complete set of tools for all things. So this is kind of long-term vision uh, of us. Uh, we want, of course, and that's I think that's the hardest part. <laughs> we want a complete manual with documentation <laughs> uh, to make sure that uh, people can really get started. Uh, easy. Yeah, technology is easy. You write the documentation is boring. <laughs> we need, but we need to. Uh, to make it open. Uh, important thing is that we want to keep it open. Uh, open means uh, open source, it also means free, it also means community based. Uh, it also means that we need to, to keep in touch with the community that people are actually using Axe. I think it's a great power for language to have uh, direct input from the community for people using the language because even sometimes it's like, uh, it can be really like, or we call new question. Uh, people coming up and say, oh, I want to change it. But I mean, the, the way they express it, they, they really feel that way. And we can really listen to this and say, OK, there's really something wrong with the way we do it right now. And so we, have, we, have, we, we can use all this input to improve the language. Uh, and at the same time, we want to allow company developments. 
uh, and involvement. Because, uh, well, we, a lot of people are doing work in the company. I run myself a company. And uh, most of my work I do on a daily basis is in my company. So we really need to get companies on board uh, with us, not only like uh, hobbyist programmers or like uh, we have a lot of uh, freelance developers. We also need companies on board. And uh, for com uh, to get companies on board, we need to uh, convince not only developers, because developers, they can be convinced with technical arguments quite easily. I guess we have a lot already. Uh, but we need to convince like, people making decisions. And they are not technical uh, people. So for this, we need some uh, bit of marketing. Necessary. And uh, so we need to kind of have, come up with a, like, uh, with a real plan uh, for marketing to uh, kind of sell uh, acts to, uh, to make it uh, used in company as well. That's also an important thing we need to focus on in fact. And, uh, and for this, uh, to do that, I mean, the first part is really community based. Every one of you can contribute. For the second part, I think it needs kind of more centralized process. I mean, it's not something that you can do because we are developers, right? What we like is writing code. When it comes to marketing, when it comes to writing documentation, things like that, I think we need kind of, you know, more centralized process people that doing that, you know, focus. And uh, because it's not something you do it as a hobby. Marketing is not a hobby, basically. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, and uh, so, yeah, that's it. One thing we want to make is the explanation. That's something uh, uh, I've been thinking for sometime already, and we'll definitely like make it this year. Uh, so explanation will be non-profit organization. Uh, it will be open to individuals and companies. Uh, so the, the, the idea is that if you want to get involved with us, I mean, for the long term, if you want to, you can be part of it. And we will have a way to, uh, like companies sponsoring the projects, sponsoring developers, uh, doing helping with marketing, helping with documentation, all the things we need right now that are really uh, are necessary to get to the next level. Not only features, I mean, language features are nice, but at some point we need more than that. So, yeah, and of course, uh, Axis and will still be a dictatorship. <laughs> <laughs> That's something we want to keep, because yeah, I believe that we, we need a lot of collaboration for all these things that are committing to, and for all, doing all this stuff, we need also collaboration. But for language design, I think at some point, uh, Collaboration. I mean, I like collaboration and I like democracy a lot. But you cannot design with a uh, language, programming language with a democracy is a word that doesn't work well. Uh, so yeah, it will be this part will still be my kind of dictatorship. <laughs> Sorry. So well, thank you. What would the changes to uh, 209 and uh, 30 be for the targets? I mean, would the target this limitation have to be changed? You you know, like are, to yeah, of course we have to keep up the collections in the compiler for targets, for example, uh, since the charts. Syntax change doesn't change much for the targets. Packet change doesn't change much for the targets. For example, the new like things for switch, like switch uh, with the cases. Uh, change things on the targets, might change things on the targets. So, yeah, we same thing we decide with targets. You don't have to rewrite the whole target. But the sure, sure, sure thing is that in treatment or you will have new targets. That's for sure. The question yet? Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, do, do you have any idea what uh, Google's perspective is on hacks, especially on the JavaScript side with their uh, Google Web Toolkit? Question mm -hmm. one, sorry, I, what? Do you know anything about Google's perspective on hacks? Ah, uh, Google's perspective on hacks. Uh, <laughs> well, they, they made that. <laughs> no, I mean, Google is very complex. I think, I, I think you, you can say Google have an opinion of something. Google is a very big company. You have a lot of small teams that do their things by themselves, and they can only do their own thing. For example, Dart is one thing made by a small group inside of Google. I don't think Google have really an opinion as Google, right? So you, you might have like the developers I love. Uh, there is the developers in Google that love the Axe and that use it. I know about this already. But Google itself is not using Axe as a, comp a company. I mean, I think. But I mean, yeah, yeah, see, I'm sure that, I mean, of course, they are the engineers and they, uh, a lot of them are using like that. I would love to start with you raised a very interesting point for myself personally, which is to replace the whole um, the because I work on the, the tight desk file that HTML stuff that we have as a project. 
is that going to go into version 3? Which would be a massive change. Uh, so which, which, which the devs or the stuff scare stuff that we're working on? Or the HTML5? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That we go into as well, yeah. Okay. Like, all the like, HTML5 and the GS. Yeah. Yeah, then we go into Metal. I didn't put that. No, no, no. Yeah, it's easier. Have you considered link like structures at all? For like, like a link in C sharp? Yeah, we have something which is a bit like link. Uh, in Spot, for instance, uh, in Spot you have a request uh, which are expressed in X syntax. I, I, it's kind of link. Uh, you can do that with macros, I think. Yeah, already. In the port imports, can you use using? So exporting using to all the usages? In yeah, the yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. It's both it, it, it can use imports and using, so it can be default using. The question? Uh, can you also import servers inside the box, or is it always uh, both? Uh, yeah, it's not, there is no scoping yet. It's only uh, a top of it. If, there is a, if inside the class, you, you can just like write the class. Yeah, that's good. Or write the type data. What target would you like to see after C sharp and Java? Java. What what what, <laughs> are, what is the, I mean what are the mainstream platforms that we are missing after we now we have C and Java? That's the question. I mean it's not about personal taste, it's about uh, for me uh, all the platforms I'm using on daily basis are already in Axe. So I don't have a special need. But I think that uh, you might have some. So that's for it. Other questions? Uh, what about um, Friend classes that uh, you, uh, there, there was a discussion. Yeah, yeah, something I think we'll get into Drupal more as well. Oh, okay. I think it's, yeah, like that. Uh, it's a, there's a draft uh, on next of all slash manual for, uh, I think it's like, accessible, uh, or to access private yeah. different classes. And just something also, which is just not a big change, it's a long game change. But I, unless we find a better way to do it, it will be in Drupal 4. Unless there is a better proposal. Other questions? Okay, we're done then. Thank you.